Hello there, everybody. This is me, Nonami17 Spore, back with Through the Waves 2, where we find out what happens when you take the exact opposite approach as the uh, French pre dreadnoughts did, and instead of having six gun calibers, or six different gun calibers on your ship, you only have one. We are currently playing as Britain in June of 1915. Blockading Germany in a war that has now lasted for 21 months. We're a little bit in the red in terms of monthly budget, but I think we're okay for the moment. Uh, right now, in terms of our situation, we have 12 battleships and 3 battlecruisers. Germany right now has 2 battleships and 5 battlecruisers. Okay, as well as 8 pre-dreadnoughts. Um, which is actually kind of why I need to keep all the battleships around. So it's like... The battle line, I, okay, yeah, I guess the battle line is 10 versus 12, and then the five battle cruisers versus three. It's even, yeah, it's even. Um, battle line's presently even, then. The problem is, you know, Germany's battleships, you know, pre-dreadnoughts are uh, kind of bad. I mean, they're, they're pre-dreads, you know, versus proper dreadnoughts. Most of our line has 14-inch uh, guns, with the Orions having 16-inch um, the problem right now is the battle cruisers. None of them are really all that scary on their own. Like, th this is bad. Gobin is legitimately terrible. Von der Tan, not a lot of armor, but a little better. And then the three Moltkas are decent, but their armament is subpar for this time. The problem is, you know, we're, we have the, uh, two Indomitables, which... Are, st are a little lackluster. They're better balanced, but they're still kind of lackluster for this time. And Lion, which is actually legitimately good, but, um, you know, we only have one of them. We do have another one under construction. Well, technically an improved Lion. Um, but, you know, she's still over a year out. Just over a year out, but yeah, she, she's still a year out. Which is not exactly the greatest of situations in terms, and it would have been, you know, the battle cruiser battle would be a lot better if uh, if we had, you know, more, you know, if we had another uh, battle cruiser. Problem was, much earlier in the war, we had another line class battle cruiser, and she got sunk by a really lucky shot. From a uh, German CA. Yeah. I'm still kind of pissed about uh, Tiger's loss. Due to that one incredibly lucky hit. Ba basically a golden. You know the golden shot. The golden shell. Um, and that's knocked out one of our battle cruisers permanently from the war. <laughs> Whereas. Uh, yeah, we're now at a disadvantage there. Well. Five, five to three, and it's mostly been the battle cruisers doing all the fighting. So I'm not, I'm not liking that situation too much. Now you may notice that I just turned my submarine warfare policy to fleet support, and that's because I didn't have it on there before. And Germany's blockaded; they probably should be on fleet support. Uh, how many subs are we building? Do we? Oh yeah, we have some subs uh, building currently. Um, maybe I do get like a couple more coastal subs under construction. It'll cost a little bit more, but you know I kind of want to keep the subs going. In terms of ships under construction, in four turns, we will... Actually, yeah, in four turns, we will be getting four uh, Victor-class destroyers. Um, and then we'll be following that up with uh, Ness-class destroyers. Although I do want to try to rename Lynx and Beagle. Uh, if I can. So if I just start suggesting names... Can I get one starting with N? I can't. That'll be a problem for future me. I think trying to get all the... Maybe the nest class will just kind of remain where it is. And the Victor class, you know, can continue on with the... Well, I mean, they have the V names, but yeah. 
I mean, the next class is just a slightly improved victor. I probably should have kept the V names going. Um, Alright, British ship CA King Alfred is catching something. Ooh, and we have revenge. Oh, fun. So is that both King Alfred classes here? Or is... No, revenge is Royal Oak. Okay. So Royal Oak is a little better than the King Alfred, I think. Or is it not? I actually don't think it is. It was supposed to be. It was supposed to be better. You know, it was supposed to be like a not faster, and that just didn't happen. Okay, so we're reporting this as a B. I I don't think it's a pre dreadnought. If it is a pre dreadnought, we're gonna catch it. And if it is a pre dreadnought, I mean, I don't know. I might I might take two King Alfred, no, a King Alfred and a Royal Oak over a pre dread. I think that would be a winning fight for me. Two big armored cruisers versus a pre-dreadnought. But my guess is that this is not actually a pre-dreadnought. It is probably another German. It's probably a German CA. Uh, just go to fast. See a Freya class, it can go 21 knots, we can go 22. Problem is, with a name like Freya, she'll inevitably be uh, dodging torpedoes left and right. Now, we are going at 22 knots, uh, we are reporting that class is only being able to go 21, so we have a 1 knot advantage. I don't know how I slowed down to normal, that was uh, accidental. Now, what will probably happen is, since these are coal-fired ships, um, she'll slow down. Oh, okay. We lost her. Yep, that, she escaped. Freya escaped. Escaped what would have been certain death. Um, I'm just going to disengage in the night. I, I don't want to risk it. Especially since, you know, I don't have any secondary guns. Um, th those would be kind of important during night actions. Yes, and I think she would just continue to run away. Like, if we look at the Force flagship, yeah. Yeah, simply put, I made the right call. Alright, um... That's the German Dreadnought under construction. That is worse than an Orion. It is, it is kind of a fast battleship, though. 24 knots. That's probably comparable to our Victorious class, or a Barfleur. Yeah. I don't know, a Barfleur might be... Um, a Victorious might struggle a little bit, thinking about it now. Um... A Barfleur would probably beat her, though. Actually, no, a Barfleur does only have the 8-gun broadside, so yeah. This is probably comparable to a Barfleur or a Victorious. Um, maybe a little bit better. And, of course, we lose Barfleur. Great. Just lost another capital ship from that. Oh, well, uh... uh no, gotta keep going on. Victor class destroyer. Actually, that uh, vendetta is almost done, so that's good. When we raid on coastal shipping at the Thames, they decline. I'll accept a convoy defense. I'll do. A, I'll accept this. I'll accept this raid. All right. What do we have? So we have. Lion, Invincible, and Indomitable. So our battlecruiser formation is here in terms of armored cruisers. Uh, we have three Andromeda class, it looks like. 
going behind them. That's going to slow down our formation a little bit. In the scouting division, are these also all Andromedas? We have three Andromeda class. So that's going to slow us down. The Andromeda class is only 22 knots, whereas our slowest battlecruiser is 26. Now what I would absolutely love to do is just knock out the... Uh, See if I can knock out the German battlecruisers or, you know, get bag something important from the Germans. Okay. So 22 knots. Okay. So this is probably the German battlecruiser line. That is an armored cruiser of the Freya class leading. And we have hit her with a 14-inch shell. And another one. So I guarantee she's not going to like that. You know, 14-inch shells on armored cruisers are not great. Wait. No, this is battlecruiser formation. We have just misidentified that. That's a Moltka. That's another Moltka. So that's Van der Tan. My guess is that's a Moltka. So probably engaging three Moltkas and uh, Der Tan. Now let me just quickly check some, uh, quickly check the conditions. So the wind right now is blowing this way. That's good. That's really good for us. Because our smoke is going this way. Their smoke is going to go this way, more into their line of fire. So we are in a good position on them. Now... No glare. There's no, no glare right now. Uh, night. It's, we're in the afternoon. It's going to be night fairly soon. Um, but honestly, I think I kind of want to just hold this position for as long as I can. Yeah, your goal should be that be should be that division. Um, now, if you could... Yeah, if you guys can target that Freya class, that would be great. 7-inch shell hit on the Freya. Um, Indomitable near miss. I'm... Our range is pretty dialed in. Or maybe not. Maybe not. Take, we're starting to take some hits. I'm going to do a small diversion to the north. Wind is still in our favor. Okay, so Freya class is taking 6 inch hits right now. Uh, we are reporting medium damage. We did score a 15 inch on the lead Molka. Good news is right now, these guys out, are out running their destroyer support. Which is what we want to see. Um, so they did their little charge at us and are now turning away. Uh, I'm gonna order a small course change in, to pursue. Uh, Indomitable is starting to take some hits. Shell burst limited by coal bunker due to a belt extended penetration. We're not going particularly fast right now. So the Freya class is definitely slowed. Well, I mean, it's a slower ship anyway. So we can run her down, we can cap, or we can catch her and uh, hopefully destroy her. It would be nice to do something about these uh, German battlecruisers here. So I'm going to go slightly broadside. We've been spotted by enemy aircraft. Um, I'm assuming that we're not in great danger right now. Torpedo bombers probably aren't that significant of a threat. I'm going to hold off a little bit and then kind of start approaching again. Lion gets a fi nice 15 inch hit into the Moltka. They have rejoined with their escorts. Now my thought is if we can get around these guys, hopefully we can hit, hit that Freya class if she gets separated enough and, uh, you know, kill an armored cruiser. I mean, to, to be fair so far, you know, in terms of the battlecruiser fight, 
Uh, the German battlecruisers have not actually managed to kill on our battlecruisers. It was just a German armored cruiser that did with a lucky 8-inch uh, high explosive shell. So, the 11... I'm not super worried about the 11-inch armor piercing because it does not appear to have been all that effective against us. Especially if we're looking at the damage we've taken so far. Maybe Indomitable's taken a little bit, but I'm not super worried about it. We're, we're definitely reporting worse damage on them than on us. Um, although their town is unengaged. Uh, so now we have a little problem. They're sending their destroyers after us. I'm going to slow down back to 25 knots. Okay, there we go. They're coming back at us again. We're starting to score more hits. How soon until nighttime? Not that far away. Vanderton's being outrun significantly by the Molkas. Like, I know Vanderton's a slower ship, but I don't know what they're doing to cause that. So we're, we're scoring more 15-inch hits on the lead Molka. Okay, so right now, the smoke benefits no one. Wind's, going, wind's blowing this way. Actually, how much smoke interference are we getting? Um, smoke interference is minus 10. Okay, um, we're still reporting heavy damage on that, uh, lead Molka, but I think they're going to be able to get into port. So I'm going to turn this way. Super structure hit belt extended. So we did score another 14 inch hit on uh, this one. They're now making an incredibly weird play because of that turn we did. Are they heading into port? I think they are. I want to get something out of this. Good shooting on the Dertan. Force her away. I mean, a couple hits on the Dertan is, you know, gonna hurt that ship. Oh yeah, we, we destroyed a turret. My hope right now... I want to take something out. Oh, oh. that Whatever that hit was, that slowed her down to five knots. That was a machine, that was probably a machinery hit, but we're going to have to switch fire back to the uh, opponent opposing battle cruisers again. Okay, so I want to check. Smoke interference. We're not getting any there. Uh, are we getting any on you? Not really. Wait, hold on. We're getting firing ship high speed vibration. Try to slow down to like 23 knots, see if that reduces it. Uh, that did seem to reduce it. Wait, no, these are actual... These are actual dreadnoughts. They have actual dreadnoughts out. Alright. My thought... Bait the dreadnoughts up... Or, bait the battleships up north... The Freya class is probably going to get into port with the crippled, with her crippled machinery. Get them closer. Get them closer. I'm going to see if I can get a torpedo attack going. Okay, so 
so you're alone. You're alone. So the goal right now is to try to cut them off with destroyers from behind. I'm going to order the flotilla attack now. Oh, come on! We have a chance to do something major here. Alright. Go in. Look look at how bad this is for them. Look look at how terrible this is now for the Germans. Alright. You can go to AI control. Uh You can go to AI control. Um, you can go to AI control. You can go to AI control. I have a destroyer launching torpedoes. Okay, so I'm gonna take manual control over you guys again and send you more up north. Okay, so they are shooting up one of our CLs over here. Get closer. Get closer. Nice. Nice hit. Enemy pre-dreadnought torpedoed. Where the fuck are you guys going? Go north. They're hunting down a corvette. No. Do not. Our target right now is two battleships. Well, three battleships. Alright, Lion is launching torpedoes. Um, we have cut these guys off from returning home. Uh, Sandfly is... Probably should be under AI control. Um... So I'm going to turn this way. So this is... A, we've crippled a pre-dread. And their dreadnoughts are now being hounded by uh, destroyers from every single direction. Okay, Victor blew up. Uh, not great. The V-Class lost. Actually, no. Cut in this way a little bit. Oh, is Tigris launching torpedoes? Okay. You guys are going to turn in a little more. Yes, we hit a hit an enemy battleship with a torpedo. Nice shot. Oh, okay, this is this looks like it might be the death of the uh, German battleships, right here. And like, where do these guys go? Cause my battle cruisers are sitting down in this direction, waiting for them. Um. Oh, oh god, Vehemence just like, I'm getting point-blank range on these guys and putting a torpedo straight into them. Uh, turn around, uh, you guys do this. God. Oh god. Oh dear lord. Th this is, this is probably the worst nightmare of any battleship captain. 
I almost got to take a picture of this and just like post it in uh post it in Discord. Yeah. Just Oh god. Yeah, um Yeah, this is this is probably the worst thing that can happen to uh any battleship. Okay, we hit one of the dreadnoughts with the torpedo. Um good shooting. Okay. We have a kill on a Daishlun. Excellent. We got one of them. Got one of the two German uh, dreadnoughts. And the pre dreadnoughts dead. And um, this destroyer force is now overtaking this um, Battleship and oh god, Lion Invincible and Indomitable are like, let's just pound you with close range fire now. Oh, this is too good. This is just too good. Like, ooh, that's a hit. Nemesis is just like point blank range. Come on. Okay. Okay, um... Okay, uh... Okay, so you're merging with the formation. There we go. So Vehemence coming back down. And now this poor, poor Deutschland class dreadnought. Oh, she's on fire. She got hit by another torpedo. Excellent. Hold fire. Um, all orders back to AI control. Or all destroyers back to AI control. We have achieved victory over three German dreadnoughts. Uh, all destroyers regroup. Battlecruisers will begin making their way north, and we will attempt to attack the bombardment target. We will be moving out at 20 knots. Okay, stop wasting torpedoes. They're they're sinking. All three of them are sinking. Well, one of them sunk and the other two are sinking. Just rejoin, please. Rejoin the formation. It's it's evening now. You can rejoin. Yes, yes to all. No, don't let them die. Get some get some prisoners of war. Somehow, oh, there we go. There's the pre-dreadnought gone. My guess is that since we did send uh, destroyers out to rescue survivors, we will, at the very least, get all the survivors rescued. Okay, so yeah, BB Vettin. Okay, so we sink Vettin. So that's Vettin. Um, so that was uh, Zaring. That was from Zaringen, and then that was uh, Deutschland. And then we had 11 destroyers from our, or 11 survivors from our little sunk destroyer. I'm going to quickly check on the state of our destroyer divisions. Oh, yeah. No, wait, no, I don't want to detach her. Uh, Melampus is lightly damaged. 
Uh, Vehement has some damage, uh, not in terrible shape. Hydra, not very damaged. Vega... Vega's just detached, probably, to rescue survivors. I don't know why Brilliant's attached, maybe, to rescue survivors. Um, Andromeda has some light damage, nothing too major. Tigris took a couple of hits, mostly structured damage. Uh, Lapwing's okay. Christopher's okay. That's okay. Talbot. Uh, oh, what's the status on Goshawk? Okay, we might lose Goshawk. Um, I'm going to detach her and send her home. Other than that, the rest of those look okay. Those guys are okay. Those guys are okay. Our battle cruisers are lightly damaged. Those guys are lightly damaged. Okay. I, uh, we have one destroyer in danger, I would say. Um, yeah, we're probably going to lose Gossok. Unless they can, like, get her flooding under control. Alright. I'm going to start moving at 10 knots. Now, I'm going to slow down, because these... These areas are usually mined. Now, so apparently we can see the bombardment target, despite our uh, sighting range being relatively limited. So, why am I going 10 knots if we strike a mine? I, I don't want to. I don't want to hit a mine going at full speed. I think if you strike them at slower speed, it causes less flooding. Uh, I'm not sure on that, but you know, I think that's the case. that damn bombardment target as much as you can. It's on fire. We're reporting heavy damage. I turn around again. Now the issue with going at a slow speed like this is uh, if the enemy catches us, we're kind of a sitting duck. Which point we'll probably accelerate to cruise and get the fuck out of here once the bombardment target's dead. Marmot target is destroyed, go to cruise speed, uh, we will leave. Yeah. Poor Gossok is gonna sink. They will... That was exactly what I was worried about. Um... Go 10 knots. Uh... Don't please... Okay, she got her flooding under control. Thank goodness. Um... For whatever reason, she is detached in the worst possible direction to sail in. Okay, she's reformed. We go this way. Just go. So yeah, goodbye Gossok, I'm sorry. Couldn't do anything to save you. Actually, I'm gonna go back down, because it's gonna be daytime soon. We don't abandon our men. You're roll independent. The Lampus sights an unknown ship. Just rejoin, rejoin. Everyone please. Oh, traitor. Sink that. Please rejoin as a core formation. Brilliant, get the hell out of there. Not here. Form as a support on Lion. Just do something. Form as a support on Lion. Just go back. Please, return home. 
That's all I ask. Oh, oh, I see why these guys weren't firing. I, I forgot to order them to fire. Um, I was like, why, why aren't Lion? Why isn't Lion firing? Because I, I forgot to order them to fire. All right, so we rescued survivors from the merchant. L little, little bonus, and a little extra bonus. And please, brilliant, rejoin. Brilliant, rejoin the goddamn formation. There we go. And should end now. Okay. So, excellent battle. Um, I will very much take that. So we accomplished our objective of destroying the bombardment target, but more importantly, we got, you know, we sank the German battleships. So the battleship Vetten was uh, sunk, took a large number of torpedo hits, so let's see what happened. So we were scoring 14 inch hits at first on her. I'm sure you had 12 inch zeros, so we get the 4 inch, we get the 5 inch. Okay, yeah, torpedo critical hit transverse bulkhead rupture, DD Hornet. Nice shot, Hornet. Um, couple more hits in that turn, yeah. Oh, God, that one torpedo sank her. We basically just got one torpedo hit in it, and it was just a crippling enough shot that the ship immediately went down. Uh, Hind then gets two torpedoes into her, and then Oak gets two torpedoes into her. Hornet, nice shot. Good good shot on Hornet. So, uh, Deutschland. So, we're getting 15-inch hits, some 7-inch hits there. So, we weren't doing too much initially. Here's the light hits from the uh, Destroyer Swarm. Um... Superstar hit, secondary guns knocked out. We get the close pass, so we're getting some of the 14 inch hits, but they're really not doing anything here. Eh, that one did something. Oh, yeah, because they're HE. Okay, yep, there we go. Torpedo Druid, Torpedo Druid. Um, so she takes two torpedoes in quick succession. Uh, 15 inch secondary guns knocked out by splinters. Lots of additional hits, and then vehement. Gets the uh, final torpedo in and the final kill. And, uh... She's just getting shot up by everything at this point while she's going down. And then two torpedoes from Vega. Zaringen? So... Yeah, she was taking 14-inch hits. Orange hit. Oh, she takes a torpedo from Gossok. And, uh... That cripples her. That doesn't sink her. She does get the flooding down to zero, so she's not in danger of sinking yet. And then she takes a torpedo from Sandfly, and that's enough to do her in. And an additional torpedo from Tigris. And an additional torpedo from Hornet. Uh, Hindenburg, one of the Molka classes, we did do medium damage too. It's going to be in kind of interesting to see how our 15 shells are performing. Ooh, their 11 is only quality negative 1, so we might actually have a good, decent shot. And see these things. So yeah, 15 inch hits. I probably knew that in the past, but completely forgot it. So we're scoring 15 inch hits to not much effect. Um, yeah, really just a lot of superstructure hits, it looks like, and some turret hits. Weren't really doing all that much with the 15 inch hits on uh, Hindenburg. Lutzow took a bunch of 14 inch hits, and not all that much happened. Rundertan um, took three hits, three 15 inches from Lion, so these actually did a lot more than the other ones, although he's still struggling to get through the belt. Waterline hit, belt extended, and turret hit top, turret destroyed, probably the most important hit. So, Victor took a four-inch magazine detonation hit from uh, Deutschland, unfortunately. Freya... We did a lot of structure damage, too, not a lot of flotation damage, so... Our shells aren't doing a lot right now, which uh, seems to be a problem. Seems to be a pretty significant problem. <laughs> Although we were getting some penetrations there. We're just not causing enough flooding. Sladlitz so took uh, four 14-inch hits. She's still intact. Lion had light damage. Um, and to be fair, their 11-inchers are doing less to us than our 14-inchers are doing to them. 
Uh, Indomitable also took some damage. 12 inch, 12 inch, 12 inches. Not much done. Gossok was sunk. That was just progressive flooding. Yeah, 6 inch, 6 inch, 4 inch, 6 and 3 inches. Yeah, she just kind of got mauled and had permanent flooding. Uh, U25 just failed to return. Invincible, we took some heavy hits. Light damage on the chant. Couple 12 inch, couple 11 inch. Destroyed the installation with the CAs because I had forgotten to uh, turn my battle cruisers back on to, uh, you know, open fire. That happens a lot. Uh, German Corvette Columbia took a six inch hit from Talbot and somehow survived. Uh, vehement, um, some four inch. Lampus, so that's one of our light cruisers. So she was taking four inch hits from uh, Deutschland, and that did some damage, not too much. Tigers took some superstructure damage, looks like six inch and three inch hits. Shark, okay, we're kind of in the light damage zone. I will check out Andromeda. Oh, she took a single medium hit from the enemy battleships. So, yeah. My, my guess is that the uh, German battleships had deployed thinking, oh, you know, we can catch those uh, Brit those nasty British battlecruisers. And, um, you know, if we catch them, they sink. And then my battlecruisers are just like, are you sure about that? And are you especially sure, you know, separating away from your escorts and just swarmed them with destroyers? So yeah, overall good battle. Um, in terms of survivors rescued, uh, looks like we did get some. It was on our guys. Oh, Horn Hornet doing a good job. I think Hornet's kind of the MVP of this battle. Um, yeah, it's like maybe 200-ish survivor. Would that be 200-ish? No, that'd be 300-ish survivor. Yeah, about 300 survivors rescued. Exactly 300 survivors rescued. Uh, air details. Yeah, nothing, nothing much there. I want to take a look at the log. Just to kind of see what we rescued survivors from. So yeah. Oh yeah, Pachanta, or Pachante striking that mine was not good. She did get the flooding under control, which was great. Um, I should probably, wait, hold on. So if we're checking survivors, um, how many did we get from Goshawk? Okay, so 85 from Merchant 4 from Hornet. Rescued survivors from Goshawk before that. Oh, 83. Okay, so we picked up... Hornet had 83 survivors on her when she rescued from Goshawk. So we only got two from the Merchant. What the hell? We're two guys... Were there just... Like, the Merchant was boarded and scuttled. Were there literally just two guys sitting on it? And, was the Merchant crewed by two people? Or did we commit a war crime? I don't know. Survivors survivors in this game are weird, and I'm interpreting the rescue not as the number of survivors, but as like the amount of points you get from rescuing them. I'm hitting I'm hitting that point where no, there were totally more survivors from that merchant. Like, there's no way that anyone on that merchant died unless it was like by accident. Which I guess is possible. So we're rescuing other survivors here, so... Yeah, okay, this is where we're picking up survivors from Vetten and uh, Deutschland. So, Christopher gets 95 from Deutschland. We get 11 from Victor, 15 from Zaringen, 94 from Vetten. Okay. And like 80-something from uh, the destroyer. Yeah, sur survivor counts seem really randomized and really weird and probably should be adjusted. I'll be honest. Um, that's just one thing I've noticed with this game. Take a quick look at the Force flagships. So... What is this line? Oh, this is their battleships. So they start sailing this way. They get here. They kind of go in here. And then they come out and get absolutely slaughtered. Um, so our initial approach is to go down here, uh, 
we engaged the battle cruisers here. So the fight, yeah, we're kind of tracking down this way. This this is where the fight's taking place. Um, so they kind of start doing the. No wait, no. When we're here, I think they're down here, and we kind of see the battleship. So we kind of do the disengagement idea, and um, instead go for the battleships coming out. They kind of dupe us, because I, you know, we were misidentifying one of the Moltkas as a Deutschland class, and um, at first, so I thought, oh hey, the battlecruisers are going out this way, let's hunt them, and when, the a when in actuality the battlecruisers are going out this way, they kind of circle here for a while, we just kind of go deal with the bombardment target and leave, and leave the battlecruisers here. But yeah, good battle, uh, German Dreadnoughts destroyed, as well as German Pre-Dreadnought. That's a pretty big victory for us. Um, still can't get their Battlecruisers. It's still the biggest weakness. I would love to knock out their Battlecruisers. I've just not gotten a good battle yet. But Germany doesn't have a Dreadnought battleship anymore. If we can get our actual battle line in an engagement, they're done. They're done for. We Their battle line is defeated. It's literally just the battle cruisers and hoping that the battle generator um, gives me some sort of advantage. British major victory gained two prestige points. Battle of Helgeland Bight. I'm going to quickly do something here. I'm going to turn off the display capture for just a moment so I can boot up Chrome without accidentally revealing anything. And there we go. And now I can actually turn the display capture back on again. Uh... What I want to do is I uh, want to go to a Chrome tab I have of all the battles and uh, rename this. I'm not even sure this Chrome tab's fully caught up yet. Did I leave it somewhere? Um, so I left it at the 7th Battle of Texel. That is... Okay. No, it is caught up. It is caught up. So this would be the 3rd Battle of Helgeland Bight. As far as I can tell. Blockade is causing food sh shortages and privatations in Germany. R Royal Oak is in the yard with engine problems. Vendetta is commissioned. Uh, Rodney is damaged. Thankfully she's not sunk. Although not having torpedo protection in 1915 is not good at all. Anyway, I think that is the... Uh, that's the episode. We've been going on for, you know, 48 minutes here. You got technically two battles. Uh, thank you, everyone, for watching. This has been me, No Name Women's Own Spore. We, we nicely uh, kicked Germany's ass with, uh, you know, sinking those ships. And actually, before I go, I just I want to take a quick look at this. So in terms of naval guns, do we really need them on high right now? Probably not. Um... Okay, we got those. I th I think it's good. I think it's good to have these on high for a little bit longer. Um, apparently, for amphibious operations, you really don't need to put them too high at all. Um, I think the projectiles you're supposed to have on low, but like we're having some issues with the projectiles, so I am going to leave them on medium for now. Um... Yeah. Alright, I, I think I'm... I think for now I'm content with this. Maybe I'll put uh, Naval Aviation lighter than air on low. Um, oh, no, I'll leave... Mm, I'll put it on low. I don't think I need it. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. This has been me, No Name no, 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 Spore, with uh, Red Waves 2 as Britain. And, uh... Yeah basically traded one dreadnought for two today but you know they got their dreadnought through bullshit submarines we got their dreadnought because we we were good and oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit oh shit their flinger is in service and she's not particularly good but um actually that is be probably better than our indomitable great uh great we're, we're 12 years out from having, having another battlecruiser, and Germany now has a massive battlecruiser advantage. Um, although they're dreadnought. Any, any sort of battle fleet advantage they had is completely gone. Anyway, thank you everyone for watching. 
thank you everyone for watching. This has been me, no name of this before. I've said that three times now. I will see you guys next time. Um, links to my Discord, Twitch, and Twitter are down below if you're interested in any of those things. Maybe at some point I'll try to live stream on Twitch again, but like it'll be something odd. Anyway, uh, that's it. Good job, Hornet. Bye.